strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the, repro the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Alright, so I'm going to read from 2 Timothy chapter 2, 5 through 7. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he crowned, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that Lord must be part, first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. All praises to the Most High. Thank you for that scripture, Shalom, sis. Hallelujah. Can we turn that on with it? Hallelujah. Glory be to the Most High. Um, for some of you, um, I know um, Sister Yvette and this sister here, I keep forgetting your name. Daniel. Daniel. I knew it was pretty, <laughs> but I didn't want to mess it up because that's a beautiful name. I know you were all, all were here last week, so this is just repetitive for you, um, Bree, and those that are coming, um, that we are practicing social distancing as the guidelines of the governor of, the, of this state of North Carolina. Um, and so um, at any time that, that you, you might feel uncomfortable or anything like that, please just let us know. We want to make sure that you're comfortable while you're worshiping and here with us. Um, so families sitting together, um, but other than that, if you are not a uh, family, at least two chairs apart, um, so forth and so on. I don't think we have that problem in here. Um, so so we're good. I just wanted to, to make that claim in case anybody come and ask you to scoot over no one will get offended, you know, so forth and so on. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are so excited. I did want to make a couple of announcements before Pastor Kenny brings the lesson today that next uh, Shabbat will be our new moon celebration. So we will be, that will actually be a feast day for us here in this building. We will be having that celebration along with a Better Day Ministries, um, Elder Lavander Ingram. So. It will begin at 11.30 next week. So when you come in, there will be tables. Um, again, it won't be as we had to keep it condensed. Um, so it won't be as big as most of our feast days are, but it will be intimate. Um, and everybody will be comfortable. Hallelujah. Um, so we're excited about that, um, to have that uh, celebration um, next Shabbat. So next Shabbat, this service will begin at 11.30. AM. Um, another thing is uh, just wanted um, to let you all know, as Pastor Kenny mentioned, I think it was before most of you came in, about um, our outreach kind of being postponed. Um, we are going to gear back up to do our outreach. We are just waiting on guidelines. Um, so when we do our outreach, we do the storehouse which are the clothes for the community, and we do the backpacks for the homeless. Um, and we do not know with these new social distancing rules what our guidelines are at this point. So I know some of you, and especially some who are jo joining us by way of social media, have been asking and emailing, are we going out? We're going out because this is when we usually do that. We are planning. We are just waiting. I, I think we have to wait till after we're in phase three to even begin any of our outreach. Um, so once that happens, we will definitely let everybody know. Um, that's what we do. That's what Restoration Center Charlotte is known for. So it's kind of like we're eager to get back out there and do it. Um, but we just don't know what the guidelines will be yet. Um, once we find out what those guidelines are, we will just alter to fit those guidelines. Um, and um, if we can't give away clothes, if we can't give away food, we'll find something else to do um, to, to enhance our community because that's what it's all about is getting out here and hitting these streets. So we definitely want to take advantage of the season. 
and so forth and so on. So for all of you on social media that have been emailing and asking us when we're coming out, um, we will definitely wait till those guidelines come out and we will get started with our outreach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, welcome everyone. Shalom, shalom, hello, how are you? The whole nine uh, to Restoration Center Charlotte. We thank you guys um, for taking time out of your day to come and be with us. There are many, many people honoring the Shabbat on this day that you could join with and you chose to come and assemble, assemble with us and we don't take that lightly. So we thank you, um, and that's it. That's all I have. That's the camera. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, family. How y'all doing today? All right. We appreciate y'all coming out today. Um, I will get in, into my lesson. I think, you know, whatever we discuss today or whatever comes out is going to be a little time. Um, but one thing y'all going to learn about me is, is I'm a family. Right? And when I say I'm a family man, I mean all of you are family too. And always concerned about you guys. Always concerned about you. We this this time that we're living in, um, especially as, as so-called black people, it's it's not easy. And and the strength that you guys carry and, and the faithfulness and the things that you're going through, I just want you to know that we're always praying for you guys. So, that, that we're always lifting you up, that you're always on our heart. Um, sometimes I feel like I feel like I can't even, you know, be as as happy as, as I would like to be because it's, it's just such a burden on our people. Yes. And, I, and I find myself at times, you know, um, just feeling the burden of, of our people. And I, and I know that's the most high because likewise, um, our Lord and Savior felt that same burden. Um, there was times when he had to just get off alone by himself. And he just had to just weep, just pray, just, you know, even, even ask the most high, is it really supposed to go down like this? Is, is it really supposed to happen like this? Yeah. And, and so, so I find myself plenty of times the TV could be on and, 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 and I'm watching something, but I'm not even watching it. It's more so watching me. Because I'm, because I'm thinking about you guys and I'm, and I'm, I'm hoping and praying that, that everywhere you go, whether it's to the store, whether it's to the bank, to, the, to anything, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like, Father, cover them, protect them, lead them and guide them. Because this world that we're living in, the bottom line is there is an attack on us specifically. And, and I can't ignore it. I don't know about anybody else. I'm, I'm a doer, and so even as it pertains to outreach, like I'm itching to get back out there because I just love being in the community. I love being amongst the people. I love seeing that people are okay. As our black men are getting gunned down, as our, as our black women are being you know, sold into sex trafficking and slavery and, and, and being taken from their families, I can't, I can't ignore it. It's something that I, I just can't ignore. And, and I know if I see it, right. and I know if I feel it, likewise, everybody sitting here today, everybody viewing by way of social media, you see it, you feel it. We have cousins, we have brothers. I'm sure everybody in here has a story of, of, of a cousin or a brother or a friend that has been violated or experienced what we see coming through media today. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of it. I'm tired. I know what the scripture says. I know that we are in Jacob's struggle, but it doesn't make it feel any better. It doesn't. And so, before I even get started, you know, honestly, man, I just want to know how y'all doing, how y'all feeling. You know, what you th what are you thinking about what you've heard? You know, I I'd like to hear your voice because I think a lot of times we can come up in here and, and, and we get complacent just listening to me. But all of you matter. The most high put you on this earth to do a work. You are living, you are breathing, you are walking today. 
You have been placed in this earth to do the will of the Most High. And so I can only imagine what you're going through in your personal lives. And I'm not asking you to, to tell me about your personal life. I'm just asking you to, to voice how you're feeling and what you're thinking during this time of everything that we're seeing. I mean, whether it be our children and our, our families, you know, being made to take vaccines just so that they can eat. Whether it be, you know, uh, uh, a black man, you know, for no reason being shot and killed by authorities. Whether it be our children under attack by way of social media and all of the distractions that cause them to make decisions that eventually put them in a position to be harassed. There's so much to talk about. There's so much to deal with. And honestly, yes, my life is blessed. But it's not good enough for my life to be blessed. It's good enough for me when your life is blessed. It's good enough for me when our community is blessed. When, when, when we can admit that we see what's going on and we have a desire to do something about it. I will not stand behind this pulpit and do nothing about it. I will not sit at home on my couch and do nothing about it. We have plenty of prognosticators. We have plenty of talking heads. But the bottom line is, what are we going to do? Yeshaya said that the kingdom is within you. So if we don't do anything, if we just sit back and talk about it, how is the kingdom going to come? He said, in earth as it is in heaven. And so every time I get up here, I'm not trying to be heard just to be heard. I'm not trying to talk just to sound like, you know, somebody that's smart or know what's going on or be able to spit precepts. Man, life is real to me, man. I should be dead. I've had guns to my head. I should be gone. I should be locked up with the decisions that I made. But I'm here. And I know I'm not here to just talk. Right. I'm here to do. Yes. There's no way in the world that if I ever walked away from the most high that I would last. Mm -hmm. I know I wouldn't. Because I know where he's brought me from. I know what he's done for me. Uh -huh. I see what he's doing in and throughout my family. The most high is blessing. He is progressing us. He is doing us exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We are walking in the favor of the most high. We, we could just be not even thinking about money and here go money. We could just be, we, we, we don't even think about it. But the most high has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. So how can I not want that for you? I'm praying that the Most High will go to your innermost parts and he would, pray, he, he, he would lift every burden and destroy every yoke. Yeah. Anything that is yeah. keeping you from serving him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. I need it gone from your life. Because we can't do the will of the Father if we don't learn how to overcome from within. Yes. We are no earthly good to anyone if we are no good to ourselves. Or if we're no good for the most high. I swear I don't do this for form or fashion. I do this because I thank the most high for sparing my life. I don't know if anybody knows how it feels to have a gun to your head. And the trigger man's arm is just shaking because he's scared. He's being told to do something by, by, by somebody else. He just with the crowd. And the person that got their gun to my head, their hand is shaking, which means they are frightened, which means one false, false move, pow. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. Y'all wouldn't be here. You understand what I'm saying? I'm grateful to the most high. And so I just, I just want us to, to learn how to effort and how to compete to get past our own struggles for the greater good. You don't think Yeshua had struggles? You don't think he had obstacles? He was a black man in the midst of a Roman government just like we are black men and women in the midst 
of American government, which is an extension of Rome. That's right. That's right. Please understand, this country, these people did not come to save you. This country, these people did not come to help you. No. Watch you I don't care what they give you. I don't, I don't care what they say. The most, ha the most high said, I brought you here to repent yes. for your sin. I brought you here. To do a work. And so all that's going on, what you see on the news, what you may read on your phone, what's coming through in the articles, whether it be Ahmaud Arbery or whether it be uh, George Floyd, whatever the case may be, listen, y'all, people are rising up, people are tired. This is what the scripture said. The Most High said that I will cause these things to happen. These things must come to pass. Why? Because he loves you. He doesn't want you depending on a world system that he's getting ready to destroy. I don't depend on a job. That's right. Even though I have one. Mm -hmm. I understand that if I lost my job today or tomorrow, that if I was standing beside a rock, the Most High would say, strike that rock and I will be fed. Mm -hmm. That he will turn the rocks into bread. That he will crack the rock open and give me water. I believe it because he right. did it already. Right, right, right. That's right. I believe this word. I'm telling you, I believe it with all of my heart. There's nothing else to believe in. If you're believing in the American dream, stop it. If you're believing that the people that you see on television really care about you, Stop it. If you believe that the Most High is going to save you any other way than what his word said, stop it. Because these things must come to pass. But to them who endure until what? The end, the same shall be saved. So how can you endure if you're distracted all the time? How can you endure if you won't get up and you won't say, you know what, I'm just going to press my way through. We hear people say it in the world all the time. Pressure produces diamonds. But then we have people who call themselves followers of the Most High who will sit back and rest on their laws and will not press. If the world believes in pressing, where are we at? What's wrong with us? Why are we not pressing? Yes, hallelujah. Mm. I know the Most High didn't bring me here. He didn't put me on this earth. I'm not living in America to be comfortable. I'm a sojourner. I'm a stranger in the earth. I'm passing through. Because I know there's something greater. Yes. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 says, Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. I don't want your gifts. I don't want nothing from you. Everything that I get comes from the Most High. He's the one that gives. He's the one that takes away. If he decides to take it away, I'm still going to press. I'm still going to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm still going to get the job done. Hallelujah. Some of us really need to repent and go back to our first love. We need to go back to that place. I don't care if you even got to dig it up to how you felt when you was in a Christian church. Because a lot of times we had more zeal and we had more excitement when we was in the Christian church than we have now that we're in the truth. That's right. I remember when I was in the Christian church and I would be walking down the street looking for somebody to pray for. Mm -hmm. Looking for somebody to lay hands on. Right. Walking in the grocery store looking for somebody to buy groceries for. Looking to be a blessing. Looking to see the signs. Looking to see the wonders and the miracles. How much more now that we are in the truth have we been empowered to do the same? I will not sit behind a table and precept you to death. Absolutely not. Thank you. So all my brews out there, get up. Stop being prognosticators. Stop just diagnosing the problem. Get out there and do something. Yes. I don't care if you got to go buy 10 loaves of bread and just hand it to somebody. Do something. Yes. Because I know somebody did something for me. Or else I wouldn't be here. Right. Right. I'm going back to my first love. 
Christianity was just, or the religion of Christianity, is, it, it, it was here. It was already here. We didn't have anything else. Right. It's all we know. But it doesn't mean that it's the end all be all. The Most High brought us through it yeah. into the truth. So how much more excited should we be yeah. to see signs, wonders, and miracles? How, how much grateful should we be to be not only hearers, but doers of the word? Yeah. Get off your behinds and let's do something. Yes. Hallelujah. A man that tries to hold on to his life will lose it. Yes. But the one that is willing to give up his life shall gain. Mm, you shall gain it. Mm. There's nothing in this world that's better than the Shemaim, than the heavens. There's nothing on earth yes. that is better than the earth that's coming, the new Jerusalem, the new kingdom. There's nothing better than that. Yes. You ask me how I know, all you got to do is look at what's going on today. Mm. Do you really want this kingdom? Mm. Do you really want to be here mm. in the situation that we're in? Mm. Not knowing that when you walk out your door, especially me, I could be going to the store and just be a victim of somebody that's looking to kill a black man? Mm. Do you know how uncomfortable it is for my wife? How uncomfortable it is for my children? Every time I leave the house, That we got to build ourselves up in our most holy faith and make sure right. that we're not walking by right. sight. Yeah. Because the things that we see, the, the, the fear paralyzes. Mm. And this is why we've been preaching against it. And we preach righteousness and we say, overcome fear. Get up. Right. Yeshua told that man, take up your bed and walk. Stop being afraid to get up. It's not going to happen if you don't get up. Right. If you don't make the decision to do something. We got to do something. You can, ask, you can ask my family. I've gone out here and done it by myself. Yeah. I've gone out and stood in front of the, job, the Dollar General by myself. Mm. I didn't have brothers in the faith that said, Pastor Kenny, we're going to be there with you. And then when I get there and I'm looking yeah. at my watch, they didn't show up. But did I leave? No. Right. If I got to grind this joint out by myself, then that's what I'm going to do. Mm. Because I'm working out my own soul salvation. I encourage you, I motivate you. That's, that's really all I can do because at the end of the day, you got to say, you know what? I got to do more. The kingdom is within me. Right. If you don't understand what the kingdom is, open up your book and read and find out what is involved with building up yourself in his most holy faith. Uh -huh. And saying, you know what? When I feel my worst, that's when I'm going to get up and do something. How many of us have ever given um, in any kind of way and, and, and that was therapeutic for us we felt wonderful, we forgot all about what we was going through yes, yes. we forgot all about it mm -hmm. because in that moment in time we was like oh it feels good to do something for somebody else yeah. that's you activating the kingdom mm -hmm. on the inside of you yeah. I want us to activate the kingdom on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I'm just blessed and I'm thankful that, that, that you guys are here today. I'm blessed and I'm thankful by way of social media that you guys are viewing today. Restoration Center Charlotte welcomes you. On behalf of my awesome and amazing wife, Pastor Baraba, and the Restoration Center Charlotte family, we welcome you today. We love you in the name of Yeshia, and we just really, really hope and pray with our effectual and fervent prayers that you get up and you do something. It's not all about God help me, Lord help me. This is what I need. This is what I want. He says, I've already given you Yeshaya. I've already given you everything that you need. All you have to do is operate according to the kingdom and not operate according to this world because he has not given you a spirit of fear but of love. And not just any kind of love, but his love. Yeah. The love that caused him to want to be in relationship with you so much so that he created the heavens and the earth. He said, let there be light. And there was. Oh. He created the animals. He created the trees. He created the foliage. He created everything for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
everything that has been created. He did it for you, yeah. Israel. In the eyes of the Most High, we are kings, we are queens, princes, princesses, royalty. Thank you, God. We cannot continue to live below who the Mount of Most High called us. Yes. And everything that comes along with being a king, everything that comes along with being a queen, it's already on the inside of you. All you got to do is get rid of the distractions and activate your faith. Don't you know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? And every tongue that has risen against you in judgment, you, Bree, have been given the power to condemn it. I don't care what anybody says to you. Bottom line is, when somebody is talking greasy to you, it's because they see something in you that they don't believe is in themselves. That's right. That's right. They see something great on the inside of you. If you don't have no haters, then you ain't doing something right. right. So when you got people coming against you, and you got people talking greasy to you, just count it all joy, yeah. because the kingdom is within you. They see it, they just can't explain it. Uh -huh. That's right. But everything that you need, the Most High has already put it on the inside of you. And we don't have time to waste it. Because you only get one shot. This is our audition for the kingdom. When we stand before the Most High, he's not going to say, what have you done for me? He's going to read the book and tell you what you've done for him. Yes. Mm. And if it ain't enough, depart. Mm. Mm -hmm. No excuses. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so what's been going on lately? You know, I'm going to start with Pastor Ronda. Just, just what's been on your heart? What's been on your mind? How are you feeling? All right? How are you feeling about what's going on? Well, honestly, my heart hurts. Um, to the point where it's hard to talk about it. Uh, I know the, the season and the time that we're in. I know it. But it doesn't make it any easier. Because they're are people that are of us, that don't know they're of us. And they don't know what to do. And so before we condemn people for rioting, we need to know where they at. They don't know what to do other than to revolt. And we was talking about this yesterday as a family and I was saying, you know, these young people nowadays, they aren't under that slave, me slave mentality. They look at themselves as equal because they, they didn't get colonized like some of us who were older. So they're like, they're seeing their peers and everything on television doing it and doing it big. They see opportunity. They see all of that. So when they look at the law killing us. When they look at, they look at that as unfair and how dare you do that to me when this man put his hands on the same way I do. So if they don't, if they don't know who they are and they don't have a relationship with the most high, they're going to revolt any way they know how to revolt, but they doing something. Right. So before we start to calm down, we need to tell these cops to calm down. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Before we start judging them where they are, we need to understand the mentality of where, they, where they're at. If someone keeps abusing you and abusing you or bullying you and bullying you and bullying you, you're going to keep internalizing and internalizing. And pretty soon, you're going to say, I can't take it no more. And when you fight back, if you haven't had the direction from the Most High, to know how to fight, you're going to fight any way you know how. And I liken it to when I was in high school. I was a fighter. If you looked at me wrong, you was catching these hands. I was a fighter. And I felt like I had to be because of the environment I was in. 
And when people come at you and come at you and come at you, this nation has been bullying us for years. Years. And now they are blatantly killing us right in our face and saying, deal with it. No consequences, no nothing. They mad. But it saddens my heart. Yes. yes. Because, and not just the Christian church. I'm talking about preachers in general. You don't want to speak up until you're telling them to calm down? Really? Dude, where was you? Where was you when 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 the cop had his, it, why, why didn't you put something on social media then? Man. You know what I mean? That's right. Like, to me, like, that's why people are outraged. And that's why people are running from the church. Because they sing. <laughs> You know, that, that, that we just, oh, everybody calm down. No, I'm not calming down. I'm going to do something. We just need to learn how to do it. And we need to know that when we, when we do something about it, it's, gonna, it's our dollar that's going to do something about it. And that's a whole other subject. That's but right we need up. to stop activating this economy. That's right. Because we are the biggest consumers in the United that's States. Right. Our people. And if we stop giving them our dollar, money. that's when we're going to see change. Now, how do we get to these people and let them know that? How do we act? Because it takes more than one. That's right. That's right. It takes more than one. So how do we see that activated? One of the ways that we see it here at Restoration Center activated is through our life classes that when we start back up in the community centers. Mm -hmm. Having experts come in and teach people how to manage their money and not how to manage their money just so that they can get a house or just so that they can get a right, car, right. But, but how to use your money as a weapon, mm -hmm. understanding that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Right. You know, right now people are living in carnality because they don't have the truth of the most high. Yeah. They don't have, um, they, the, the, the church doesn't have their trust anymore. Because we can take your money and, 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 and we can open up the doors for you to come in and, and, and we can encourage you when times are good and we can say all of these nice things. But then when it comes time to rise up against the people that need to be called out for their mess, a lot of our churches are finding out, hey, they're not standing across from me. They're actually standing beside me. Right. Right. Because we're all up under the same umbrella. I didn't know we had the same vision and the same mission. A lot of people don't even know that we're funding our own destruction. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right, Pastor. We're paying these police officers yeah. to kill us. Yeah. We're paying the government to slight us and to lie to us. We're empowering our enemies over us with our dollar alone. So, so having these life classes where we will teach people how to spend their money. Mm -hmm. This is why we're developing a web uh, on our on our web page. Um, I forgot what you call it. It's called the marketplace where you know where anybody within Israel, anybody within the the, the Black and Hispanic community, we're, we're putting their businesses on our website so that you know where to spend your money. You know how to empower these small businesses and these minority business owners because the government didn't do it. All of the big wigs got the money. Right. All of the big wigs got the stimulus checks. Mm -hmm. People that didn't even need it. Mm -hmm. But the salons and the barber shops right. and the massage places and the, and, and the small dentists and, 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 and doctor's offices and, and the lawyers and, and, and even uh, uh, staffing agencies that are black and Hispanic owned, they did not get a penny. This is why I told y'all last week, this was a, a reset of power. This was a reset in the economy. This is an economic war that's going on along with the physical war, along with the psychological war, along with the spiritual war. Don't you know that your enemies have done a diligent search that while they are in power, they are still doing nothing but figuring out how they can keep us under. And so with the time and the power and the economics they've had, hallelujah, all they've done 
is just put up gates here, put up gates there. And a lot of your so-called black leaders behind closed doors are actually sitting at the table with them, selling telling us them out. how selling us out. how to come against us, how to gate us, how to stifle us. Think about Nat Turner. Think about the movie. How they had to bring Nat Turner in and they told him which scriptures to preach in right. order to keep the people right. in bondage. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. That which was is that which shall be. There is, Josiah said that when you stand for me, when you live for me, this world will hate you. Yes. So how come everybody love all of these mega church pastors? Mm -hmm. How come they getting so much love mm. from the world? Mm. Right. Better open up our eyes. Mm. These are who we call our protectors. These are who we call our gatekeepers and our leaders. And they have sold us out. Mm. Wow. And their reward is a jet or a plane that when it all hits the fan, they can get on that jet and that plane and they can fly back here. Mm. After they build this wall. It's real out here, man. And so, you know, you already know it's a rhetorical question, but that, that's how we going to war. Right. Is we going to have these life classes. Right. Those of you that, that, that have an expertise in a certain field that you know is beneficial to your community, we're going to be calling on you. Mm -hmm. We may need you to sacrifice an evening or sacrifice your time. We may need you to walk away from your own life. So that you can give your expertise. He says that which you receive freely, freely you shall give. Yeah. He didn't give you the gift. He didn't give you the talent. He didn't give you these things for you to sit on it or say, you know what, I'm not going to use it unless I get paid. Who needs us more than we need us now? Mm. Like I say on barbershop talk, man, we all we got. Yeah. I'm not looking to anybody out here in any place of authority to do nothing for me. When I know the most high can do much, much more. Hallelujah. So life classes. Yes. You understand? Yes. Teaching people how and where to spend their money. Mental health. Yeah. Bringing people in and allowing them to talk to a pastor. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you can't even go to your church and you, you don't even know your pastor personally. You can't even shake his hand. You can't. You don't get an email from him. You don't get a phone call from him. Not saying that that's the majority, but but it's a lot of that going on where people, you know, they don't even know their pastor personally. So they don't get that hands-on care. They don't get that touch from the pastor. They don't get that direct attention. Because you got to go through all of these gates and all these gatekeepers just to, just to get to the pastor. And, and you, you spend 10 and 12 years in a congregation where you'll never shake the pastor's hand. You'll never get a hug from him. You'll never meet him. Never. He'll never know your children's names. Mm. Not even interested. That's real. That's why I like where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. And you best believe as we grow, we're going to be appointing leaders. We're going to be appointing pastors. Mm -hmm. Because I always want to remain touchable. I always want to remain where I'm at. Right. We get 100, 200, 250, 300. Man, we need about four or five pastors. Right. So that they can do the work. Mm -hmm. And then I can go around and I can touch people's lives personally. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing like a personal touch. Sometimes you can send a gift in the mail and it feels good to receive it, but 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 it's nothing like that person, you know, traveling a ways to knock yeah. on your door and be like, man, I miss you. Here you go. Yeah. It's nothing like a personal touch. And that's what we've lost even through social media is that personal touch. People have gotten comfortable just watching church or watching, you know, teachers on social media. Thank y'all for coming out. All of you who could. Thank you. All of you who got up out of your bed and came here today, thank you. That's what I'm talking about. A personal touch. I want to be there. 
I don't think y'all know how much that, how good that makes me and Pastor Rhonda feel. Hallelujah. Because we know that we have so many supporters that cannot be here. Yeah. Right. And so we good, we straight. But it's nothing like a personal touch, man. It's nothing like seeing you. And please understand, even through this social distancing, they are trying to take that away from us. Yeah. Yeah. Right? When we joke sometimes, we'd be like, man, we already used to social distancing because you know, black people all up in our face. You know, you know how black people are. You know, I need my space. You know what I mean? Right. But, but, but from a worship standpoint and from a family standpoint, this is why people have family reunions, because at some point in time, man, it's, it's, it's absolutely a necessity for us to come together. And that's how it was in Scripture, man. Every Shabbat, it was a family reunion. That's why he said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves, what? Together. Social media ain't enough. My social distancing will come by way of Holy Spirit. It will not come by way of what they are perpetuating psychologically amongst our people. We're already divided enough. We don't need to be further divided. A house divided against itself cannot stand is what our Savior said. We'd rather to obey the Most High than to obey man. Now, you don't let your good be evil spoken of, which is why we're in the situation that we're in today, and you made that announcement earlier, yes. right? right? But what I'm talking about is way deeper than that. Yes. Way deeper. I'm talking about determining in your heart, in your mind, to forsake not assembling, because we all we got, y'all. Hallelujah. We better get to know one another. Yeah. Yeah. We better stop walking in fear. Because it's going to be a point in time where we can't even come in these buildings and our homes are going to be the sanctuary. That's right. So if you colonize by social distancing or you scared every time somebody cough or every time somebody get close to you, 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 you nudge it away, you've been colonized. How are we going how, how, how to get together in our homes and, and praise the most high? How are we, how we going to fellowship? Because the gospel has to go on. Don't you understand after Yeshia uh, uh, was dead, buried, raised, when Peter and the disciples were under the oppression of the Romans, that they had to go, they had to find a, a private place, mm -hmm. that they had to begin to worship in their homes. It's coming back. It's coming back. The same things are happening. And so we got to get rid of this, this worldly mindset. Right. And we got to walk by way of the spirit. The Spirit will give you wisdom. The Spirit will protect you. Yes, it will. There's no way that you can do what you got to do for the Most High. He not give you everything that you need to do it. Yep. That's right. Including a spiritual shield. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. How you think Yeshaya healed the sick? That's right. Did he social distance? No. <laughs> that man sat with the sinners. He ate with the sinners. He drank with the sinners. He was in close proximity to the sinners. He ain't get six feet away from that woman and say, rise. Right. He laid hands on her. Mm -hmm. She wasn't tripping off of social distancing when she needed a heal. And she said, if I could just get to him and touch the hem of his garment. Mm -hmm. This stuff happened for real, y'all. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? These are testimonies that happen for real. This is our culture. Mm -hmm. And we need to reattach to our culture. Because when we begin to reattach to our culture and our heritage, we can't be faded, y'all. Right. This is how the kingdom is going to come. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 How you been feeling? What you been thinking lately? How I've been feeling? Um, I've been feeling like I'm feeling two words. Motivated and frightened at the same time. Um, motivated because every day it never ceases to cross my mind how I can help my people. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so blessed with all the most high has given me. And he's literally given me everything I need. I couldn't ask for anything else. So now every day I'm thinking, how can I give back? What can I do? You know what I'm saying? To help my people. Like That's the motivation. Because I see even people that are out in the world, my fellow 
young people that are out here, even if they're, what's it called, gluten targeted and all that stuff, I still see them fighting for something. So that motivates me. But frightening because I'm just getting out here. You know, like the older generation, you guys had a certain um, era or period where you couldn't even shake. And I, I can too now. However, I just have to move differently and I have to plan differently. Yeah. So it can be a little frightening, but I know the most I'm going to keep. And like one thing you said, even in your, your valedictorian speech, according to Proverbs 3 and 6, you said acknowledge him in, in all of your ways and he'll direct your path. That sounds very simple, but you know what? A lot of times simplicity is the best thing for us. Yeah. Not to overcomplicate stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Not to be worried, because when you look at things in its simplicity, now you have clarity. Mm -hmm. And you make room for wisdom. Mm -hmm. But if you're tossed to and fro, and, 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 you, and you're, you're not acknowledging the most high in all of your ways, now that's that gray area or that ambiguity that the enemy has to come in and replace what the most high wants to do with something that he wants to deceive you with. Right? right? So, so like I always say, nobility is not always smart. Nobility is not always profitable. Because we can be as noble as we want, but if we're not moving properly, like I told y'all last week, we're in a perpetual Passover. We gotta know when to go out, when to come in, when to go out, right. where we need to be, yeah. when we need to be there, right. how we need to be there. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. The most high might lead you, you know what? You don't need your fringes today. That's I need right. you to move in stealth. That's right. Just like he told Yeshaya to move. Yeah. When the Romans came to get him, mm -hmm. they didn't even recognize him. They didn't even know where he was because he blended in with the people. He was common. So much so that Judas had, had to kiss him on the cheek in order to, to let them know where the shy was and who he was. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, so when you allow the spirit to lead and guide you, and then you put your confidence in that, man, we're going to get the job done. So, so that's good that, that you're excited and you're motivated. But, but the natural part of us is that, man, listen, it's crazy out here. It is. And you're right. It's a lot crazier now than, than when we was coming up. Right. Peer pressures were different. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, it was like, okay, do you have on designer clothes? Or, or can you get a girl's number? Right. You know what I mean? Or, <laughs> or are you a bookworm or are you not? You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just all of that kind of stuff like that. Or can you, how late can you stay out? Mm -hmm. Or how long can you talk on the phone? Stuff like that. You know what I mean? But now, you know, y'all are facing... You know, a situation where, you know, uh, homosexuality is, is peer pressure. Mm -hmm. If you ain't willing to be free and, and, and do things that you've never done before and try things that you've never tried before, now something is wrong with you. That's right. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I didn't have to be afraid of a cop, try, of, of a cop may, you know, possibly killing me right. or shooting me. That really ain't come into play uh, until Rodney King. Yeah. In the early 90s, that was the early 90s, right? Right, right? During the time of Rodney King, and that was a beating. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just blatantly just gunned down right. in broad daylight. Right. You know what I mean? So that was kind of like the introduction to that, and by that time, I was like 16, 17 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the, the level of, of, of the sex trafficking and the human trafficking and all of that kind of stuff like that, these things that, that are out here in the atmosphere Every time you see a white van or every time you see a truck, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be, you gotta literally be looking over your shoulder and be aware. Mm -hmm. Because areas are being targeted. Yeah. To, to, to pick up our daughters, to pick up our, our sisters and our wives. Especially in DC. Right. It's heavy in DC. It's heavy everywhere. But 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 the thing about it is, you know, we, we have to ask him to direct our path. I'm talking about all the way down the man. I, you know what? I gotta go to the store and get something, and I'll be about to walk out the door. But I need the Holy Spirit to tug on me and say, "No, not right now. We can wait. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just ten minutes, it can wait. Yeah. I'm gonna let the death angel pass, and you can come out. Right. Yeah. That's right. You know where I'm coming from? Yes. Mm -hmm. This, this, this. These are the times that we're in. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you look at it that way, you don't really have time to be pointing the finger. 
You don't have time to be calling somebody else out for their wrong and what they're doing because, because you're moving and you're so occupied with the things of the spirit, which is the word of the most high, mm -hmm. that you're just in tune mm -hmm. with heaven so that you can be earthly good. If it wasn't meant for us to be earthly good, he wouldn't have sent Yeshia to die a physical death. Right. Right. So he's the blueprint at all times. Mm -hmm. Young black man, how you, how you feel? Young Israelite man. Let me correct that. Young Israelite man, what you think? Well, I'm honestly feeling, you know, hurt for the people like George Floyd and all them. But the fact that we got to realize is this is going on all over the world. we got 7 billion people in this earth, and it's going on more than we every minute, every second. So it's like there's more people that we can see than I even shown in the news. So I just feel, and I pray for all those people, but how I feel like how I can help is, you know, I've been – texting and calling my friends and just telling them what's going on and I've got responses back like like I know who the real Israelites are or I know that we're the real Israelites from almost ten of my friends and I'm very happy that I was able to tell them yeah. and this this is who it's gonna come from. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's why we gotta get to our children before the world does. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they have not too long been away from the most high. We got to get them before they jaded and before they, they, they're they distracted with the things of this world. Because they're going to have to pick a side. They're going to have to choose a side eventually. But I know, you know, it took some, some, some hard work for me to get to the point where I'm at today because of my experiences in life. Some of us, man, we get old. How they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Some of us get so old and jaded that, that, we, that we just don't even feel like we, we, we can do something. Right. right. You know what I mean? But there is something we can do, even if it's pray. Mm -hmm. Empower our young people. Mm -hmm. You know? And get the word out there. Yeah. Get the word out there. Bree, how you feeling? What you thinking? Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm show what you what they want you to see mm -hmm. yeah. there's so much more going on in the world mm -hmm. and uh they show the i feel like they show the things to get us started mm -hmm. to kind of like activate us mm -hmm. they're not getting the results they need with one thing so they're going to show us something else mm -hmm. to get a different result mm -hmm. like, right. so i'm kind of angry and it's working because people are i don't know the way we're reacting which i can't even be mad at that because mm -hmm. That's just how we're reacting at this yeah. point. What else is there to do? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm a team. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to basically just listen for what Most High would have me to do or uh, what to pray for. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of watching and being aware yeah. for the most part. So yeah. um, I heard, uh, uh, I watched this thing with um, Pastor uh, Mo. But um, it was activating your five senses, if you guys could just watch that. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the thing I've been working on right. um, with it myself, and just trying to get those um, five senses activated, staying aware, staying alert like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All praises. Just me. All praises to the most high. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Since how you, how you feeling right now? What you thinking? <laughs> okay, so. I got a, a message of a video this morning of uh, right here in Charlotte, North Lake Mall. They look mm -hmm. out there and they were the yep. doing their thing, right? And I was just like, we we contribute a lot to companies like H&M, and they make a mockery of us, yes. right? And I was like, I don't even feel bad about it. But they should have burnt that mug down before they left. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, it shouldn't have just been H&M. It should have been like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, the bank. I feel like if you're going to burn something down, we got inflation problems anyway. Burn the bank. Um, I was just like, we have a lot of fatherless kids. And, you know, the Quran, the Bible, the holy tablets, a 
whole lot of different scriptures, even Buddha, they talk about fatherless children and how, you know, we get a certain type of person as an adult because they weren't guided. I grew up from a generation where, you know, a lot of the companies left us in an impoverished state, not necessarily my family, because I come from a family of entrepreneurs, they gonna get it. But a lot of my peers, they have parents who are addicts or whatever, and I see that they have mommy issues, daddy issues, and they are essentially latchkey kids, right? And they're out here raising this new generation of kids that don't have the slave fight mentality coupled with it. And so you have a generation of fatherless kids that don't necessarily have guidance. And it's not terrifying to me because when you go back and you read your Bible, you realize that those that were the fatherless, if God was in them, he sent somebody to them. You know, um, take for example Ruth, right? Mavon, her first husband dies, right? She renames herself Myra, the bitter, right? That happens to a lot of us when we lose something that we hold sacred and we love dear, right? But these other kids, they have lost something and don't even realize they lost it. And they're running around aimlessly. And so Esther, right? Her uncles and aunts and stuff are raising her. Mordecai is her uncle that is raising her. She had lost something and never felt the need of loss because God put people life like Ruth and Mortimer, right? So then you have Jesse, right? Jesse is being raised by the man, King David, who killed his dad because they had a disagreement of how the kingdom should be led. And we don't have enough mentors out there that are willing to go out here and feed into these children the breath of life, right? right. right? God gave them the breath of life. Before they were even born, sent their angels, spoke to them, spoke over their soul, gave them purpose. But we have so many people out here that have gifts that don't use them. And then so I look at the disciples, every last one of them went astray. Think about it. Some of them weren't brought up in the word. Some of them were Philistines and whatever else. But when God touched their lives and they clung just like, just like a game. Right? Think about these are murderers, rapists, whatever. God turns their lives around. I got so many friends that they never share their testimony because all you ever see is after God washed them clean. But you don't know that when they were a kid, they were five years old trying to sell drugs, you know, or seeing their mama get beat or hanging out in a trap house. You wouldn't know that looking at them now. They're like, I'm 35. Okay, I'm an 80 baby. But most of my friends are like 40, 45. You wouldn't know that today looking at them. Like, when we read the Bible and we look at the disciples, we forget that they were murderers. That they were, you know, not all necessarily from the best pedigree or had the most shaky, you know, the most stable foundation. That's what he said from the beginning, that he's dealing with the least. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That, that, that he deals with the least, and that's a good point that you make because as even you know, elementary school teacher, I, I, I got everyday examples of children who are wandering, wandering aimlessly, and and that's why I enjoy what I do. You know what I mean? I do what I do, and I, and I and I'm thankful to the Most High that I have that platform to be able to do these things because listen, somebody got to go out there, and somebody got to do it. And that's the point that I was making earlier about how important it is that we really walk by faith with the most high concern in our own lives and ourselves so that we can get to those that don't even have the most high. You know what I mean? Like, like we, we can exhaust the most high for ourselves, but at the same time, it shouldn't paralyze us from opening up that opportunity to those aimless children, to those people that we know yeah. don't have the most high. These people that are looting. They, like you said, Pastor Rhonda, they don't know anything else to do. You know, the authorities and the people in their lives, and, and they, they haven't had the best examples. You know, they running out there with mommy and with daddy, you know, to do. Now, 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 keep in mind, also, even within that, not all of the people that are out there doing these things 
uh, uh, it's not it's not necessarily truly the citizens and the people, you know, that live there. Take take the Mike Brown instance where where uh, uh, Mike Brown he he he's killed and, and they start to riot. The actual people in that community didn't riot, but for optics and for news. Right? And, 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 and to like further incriminate the black people, they had other people come off of a bus and begin to loot that community. Right. The people that lived there was like, we've never seen these people before in our lives. We don't know who these people are. Mm -hmm. so, so the machine is always at work. Yeah. You understand? And who are they going to target? They're going to target the, 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 uh, the what is that? If you can bind the, the strong man, then you got free reign to wreak havoc. Right. Yes. I don't know if you if you got a chance to see uh, the mayor of Atlanta. What's her name? Keisha Bottoms, or I can't. If I'm saying her name wrong, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. um, she did a press conference because you know they were rioting in Atlanta, but they were rioting in an area where there were all black-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. So she was like, "What are y'all doing? These are you." These are, T, she said, T.I. and uh, uh, Mike, think, what's his name? Killer Mike. Killer Mike owned half of those businesses that were over there, that they were riding. Again, she was upset. She was telling us to calm down and all of that stuff, but it was directed. Listen, this is why you can't do this over here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a reason, so it was, a, it was directed. And, and like... Um, Daniela was just saying, and like you were saying that, you know, these kids, they're, they're expressing something in them, you know, that the most I put there, mm -hmm. that zeal is there, mm -hmm. it's misguided. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you said something last week about misguided faith, and you know, just just misguided, and that's that's where, and, and just to piggyback on what mm -hmm. she was trying to say, and what you piggybacked on as well, that's where what you're talking about today are leaders being activated to actually go out here and be with these kids, right. be with and show them, guide them. Mm -hmm. You know, because there is there there are things that we can do, and like you said, we can't just sit behind a pulpit or behind a table and just. It's like this. I say this a, lo a lot of times um, in in girl chat and when I'm talking to the women. And I used to feel like this in the Christian church when I was younger. I would hear all this good word, right? Mm -hmm. I love the Lord. I want to please him and so forth and so on. But some of the stuff that you're telling me is it's, it's scripture and it's word. But how do I activate that in, in the earth, in this world that I live in? How do I, when, when it says um, not to cast your pearls before swine, this is just like a simple one. What does that really mean to me? Right. How do I activate that? Right. When it says walk by faith and not by sight. So how am I supposed to do that? Right. Show me how to walk by faith and not by sight. Because do I just sit there and say faith and I have faith and I quote all these scriptures? Yes, you're the meditating the word. The meditating in the word is going to give you the stability to do it. But you still have to be taught how. That's why the scriptures say to train up a child in the way that they should go. The scripture did not say go into the word and show the child all these scriptures and tell them these scriptures and have them rehearse them and meditate. No, it said there's something you have to do. That's right. The word is your foundation. The word is your stabilizer. The word, uh, the scriptures and following the law, statutes and commandments of the most high only empower you and put you in the position to follow through with what the most high has told you to do. That's right. But teachers, preachers, evangelists, and prophets are given to show you a blueprint as to how to activate right. what that word is saying for us to do. Right. So, you know, to back up what everyone has been saying here is that, yes, these people are violent in their feelings. They're violent in the way that they feel. Mm -hmm. And they're wanting justification for 
for making them feel that way. They're wanting to be justified. Right. So instead of us saying, you know, this is, y'all just need to stop. Tell me why I need to stop, which is what the mayor of Atlanta did. And then tell me how do I redirect all of this anger that I have? Yes. What am I supposed to do? So you're telling me to stop. Now I need a solution because I'm going to do something. That's right. You know, if you don't tell me what to do, I'm going to do what I know to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's, how, that's how it was out in the world, out in the cold. Right. Listen, if you don't handle it, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to handle it my way. You know, so that's the reason why it's necessary to do what both of you guys were saying is to train up these children, to be out there with them, mm -hmm. to show them, listen, your dollar is powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you stop putting your dollar here and put it in, they going to feel it. That's the only thing that they're going to feel. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. They're going to feel it if we don't stop buying into their uh, housing and redlining system. Mm -hmm. They're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. If, if, you know, if we get educated on just how this machine moves mm -hmm. and knowing how much power that we have to move it, mm -hmm. they're going, that's the only thing they're going to feel. That's it. The looting and all that, they're not going to feel that. That's just going to give them more reasons to come out here, tear gas us up, and kill more of us right. and lock more of us up. That's right. It doesn't mean that I don't support them people that, in the way that they feel mm -hmm. and why they do it. Because it, it's the way they feel. Yes, and I'm empathetic to that. No, it's not right. However, we need to give them some answers, right. some direction, right. and not just talk. That's right. Hey, meet me here. This is this is where Restoration Center Charlotte is going to be for this life class. We're going to show you how to meet me here. Right. And not just to hear a word, but to really be activated. What we're doing in, in, in the girl chat, activating people to create multiple streams of income so we don't have to be dependent upon this system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get the word. We get the word on the Shabbat. We meditate in the word day and night. But now we got to get out here and we got to make stuff happen. Absolutely. It's Plain and it's simple. It's the only way exactly. that, that is going to happen. Exactly. You know, for example, uh, Pastor Rhonda and I were being trailed by police some years ago and put out of the neighborhood um, because we were teaching people what they need to do, even within their community. We would pull our car up and we would open up the trunk and we would give book bags out and we would give school supplies out and, and, and we would um, um, give clothes out. And while we were doing that, you know, we were telling people when the gentrification was going on on the west side, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Don't sell your house for pennies. Right. You know what I mean? If this is where you want to live and this is where you want to be for the rest of your life, then trust the most high and stay right here. Stay where you at. Mm -hmm. But if you decide that you're going to sell your house, no. we're going to sit down and we're going to do the work and we're going to look at it and see how much you need to sell your house for. Because trust and believe, they would love to give you $25,000 in cash. Mm -hmm. To some people that don't even understand money, give them $15,000 cash. Mm -hmm. And then give them a, a, a coupon or whatever you call it or a voucher to go get public housing. Right. And then they tear your house down and rebuild it. And now they, they the, the least it's going to be is, is, is $350,000. So you mean to tell me, you know, you made you made three hundred and 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 thirty five thousand more dollars? Mm -hmm. I just sold my house for pennies. Mm -hmm. So giving people tangible things, tangible ways. You need to come over into this community center. We gonna have somebody that's gonna come out and tell you how to stand your ground when it comes to your real estate. Teaching delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Patience. Yeah. That's one of the things that's gonna help us in this situation. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, so I mean, even like we talked last week, um, uh, Sister Yvette, when, when you asked, okay, you know, how do I do this? And we came and said, you know what, you know, something as simple, you know, dealing with radiation, buying, buying certain plants and putting them in your windows of your home will absorb your radiation and keep you safe within your own house. These are, these are tangible ways. 
That's how we are on the barbershop talk. I mean, I need you to give me tangible ways. We need to come up with tangible things, things that we can do, that we can see the results of our labor. Yeah. The Most High said, said, don't labor in vain. And see, this is what religion has done. Religion has taught you to labor uh, uh, inadequately or taught you to labor from an ignorant standpoint, and then you just hope for the best somewhere down the road. Mm -hmm. when, when the scripture says, now faith is. Mm -hmm. There's some things that, 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 that we need to see now. Yeah. And the only way we're going to see those things come to pass now is if we activate yeah. based on the wisdom and the knowledge of the Most High. Right? Because that's what religion has done. It's just taught you to be, you know, stagnant and docile. You know, they, they, they go way out of their way with this turn the other cheek thing. Right. Right. <laughs> like I'm supposed to just let you abuse me? Right. Yeshaya had a purpose. He already died for me. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? He already took it. He, he was wounded for our, tra our transgressions. Mm -hmm. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And then he says, by his stripes we were healed. So now that we were are healed, and now that we are strong, and now that we find ourselves in Christ, we're a new creature. Now we have the new energy. We have the new ingenuity. Right. We have the witty inventions. We have the unity on the inside of us to do what we got to do. And a lot of times that's not going to come through just talking in the pulpit. You know, it's going to come through life classes. It's going to come through getting out here. Finding out where these little children are. Finding out where they, where, what community centers they go to. And then you know what? Restoration Center Charlotte is coming to that community center. And we're going to come give it. Mm -hmm. You understand? If, 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 if the oppressor can give you gifts that get your attention, why not play that game? Why not bring something to eat? Why not bring some clothes? Why not bring some toys? Why not bring something to the table? You know what I mean? To get them and their parents' attention and be like, listen, before I give this out, I need y'all to hear me out. I need y'all to listen. Because we're trying to give you something tangible. We're trying to give you some, some facts. And some, and some very things, some things that you can do within your own home to activate the blessing on your life and even the Psalms 91 protection over your life. And the first of it is just, hey, knowing who your God is. We know that there's many worships out here, but, but, but what worship is profitable for you? This is why you must know that you're Israel, because your God is the God of Israel. And there are commandments and things and statutes that he's given you to specifically do, because if you activate yourself within those statutes, then it bears the fruit that you need to not only survive your enemies, but to be able to overcome and that's what I'm about. I'm about overcoming. I'm about thriving. I'm about getting a short enough victory, not just not just making it, right. not just surviving. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I, 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 I bind that poverty mentality in the name of your shine. Right. The kingdom is within you, and then when you activate that thing, just by knowing the God that you serve, I don't knock nobody for serving Buddha. But the black man better serve his God. Mm -hmm. You better serve the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. You can be a Hindu. You can be whatever you want. You can be a Muslim. But if you're a so-called black man, you better serve your God. Because we can't forget that too, that the reason why we are in Jacob's trouble, the reason why things are happening the way they are happening is because our people don't know what God they should be serving. Yeah. They've propped up all of these other, other gods who have failed our people. And so therefore, we just all together lost our faith in God. But when you know that you are Israel and that your God is the God of Israel. And then you get in this book and you read those statutes and you read those commandments and you activate it in your life. It already profits you. The kingdom will begin to fall. The kingdom will begin to crumble. Yeah. These same religious people that, that we've been funding to turn on us, if we begin to keep the Shabbat alone and say, you know what? Bump Sunday service. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Shabbat service. Mm -hmm. I bet you those pastors and, and preachers and teachers will stand up then. Mm -hmm. 
I bet you they would get a fight because they don't want to lose. They don't want to lose anything. That's another way that you, honestly, in all honesty, I ain't hating, but that's another way that you can activate. Come out of these pagan churches. Find you a true, balanced, Bible-believing Hebrew, Hebrew congregation attached to your culture and practice that. And see if things don't begin to change. See if things don't begin to turn. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you been thinking lately, Miss Um, I was just a plethora of different things. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm so disappointed in my so-called black leaders. Um, they're so quiet. I'm. So so disappointed in my uh, white Christian pastors. Mm -hmm. They won't say nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like really quiet. Why people won't speak up? Why people won't tell the truth? Why people won't say this is wrong? Um, it's, it's quiet. And my heart is so heavy and broken for my people because they don't know who they are. And when you try to tell them who they are, they don't even know what to believe. They want, they maybe want to believe you when you say, hey, you are not the so-called black man or black woman. You are, you are from the tribe of Israel. And so you, you, you are Israel people. And black man, you are Judah. So for me to be able to say that to them, it sounds foreign. Yeah. It sounds crazy. To, mm -hmm. again, what are you talking about? I've been in church. Most Christians will say, I've been in church all my life. You know, that sounds absolutely crazy. You know we are the Gentiles. We've been told we are the Gentiles. So our folks have just drank the Kool-Aid, and it's just it's just so hard to, to get them to see the truth. I know the veil is over their eyes, but it's just my heart breaks for them to be treated and killed in the street like they're being, our black men are being killed in the street, innocently killed in the street, just like Yeshia was innocently killed right. mm -hmm. by the same folks mm -hmm. that was the Romans who killed him. Mm -hmm. And so now our innocent black men are being unarmed, being killed in the street. And it's like nobody is making this connection in, uh, amongst our people, but they're just not making the connection. It's like uh, I don't understand. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, they know it's terrible, but they can never get to, you know, the why. Right. And right. this is all. Oh, this has always been, and this will always be, un until we realize the truth and stand up and say, "Wait a minute. Right. We are not going. We are the true children of Israel. We are not going to take this any longer. Right. Mm -hmm. This has been done to us from the beginning." Right. Mm. From the beginning, when Esau and Jacob was in the womb, this has been from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And so until we realize that and and understand, you know, our history and what that really means, what does that really I mean a lot of times folks will say, Well, if we if we are Jacob or we are the children of Israel, what does that mean? It means so much. Mm. Because then it, it will tell you who you are, how you got here, and what you need to do to come out as a people. That's right. Because mm -hmm. even if mm -hmm. we come out, we still see the images on TV of our people who aren't coming out. Right. And this is what breaks our hearts. And it's just a burden for us because we want to just shake you and say, hey, wake up. That's right. You're asleep. Wake That's up. Right. That's right. Get off this, this drug that they put you on mm -hmm. and sober your mind up so that you can walk in the law, statutes, and commandments because that's what's going to bring you out. Yes. That's what's always going to bring us out. Mm -hmm. And until we realize that, it's just so, it's just a, it is a burden. It is, and it's not, it's, it, and they don't trust you to tell them the truth. Right. But if someone else comes along, like a white man comes along and tells them the truth or some national leader or governor or Whoever t starts to say, then our people look, you know, like, okay, I didn't know this. Okay, now I'm listening. <laughs> right, and it's, right. it's, the, 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 it's just such mistrust 
amongst us. That's right. And it's just, it's just so many, it's just so many contributing factors to just make this situation almost bleak. But I know, I know that we're gonna be all right. It may not be all of us, but the ones who are really walking in their true identity as the tribe of Israel and keeping God's laws, statutes, and commands, we're gonna be all right. Yeah. And maybe once they see that, they'll come in. Because right. I know there's some folks I know personally in my family, they they quiet, they like listening, they look and they watch and they're saying, okay, you know, if you saying this, I'm gonna see how it turn out. Yeah. And then I'll believe. Some yeah. people can't walk by faith. They gotta walk by sight. I yeah. gotta see it in order to believe it. So hopefully we have time for them before yeah. you know Yeshua returns that they will get the message, you know, before it's too late. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's happening. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's that's where we gotta put the focus on um those things that are happening amongst our community and amongst our people, you know, feeding yourself, you know, with those things that are positive and that are happening. And that's why we got to get out here so people can see. Yeah. That's why we got to unite, even within our Hebrew, Hebrew right. communities. Yeah. You know, we got to stop putting the point in the finger. Right. They come together. You know what I mean? Just because somebody isn't teaching something specifically the way you teach it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you come against that brother or that sister. Right. Because now you're perpetuating mm -hmm. the curse, even within yeah. the Israelite community. Yeah. That's why Yeshua said, man, don't bother them. If they're not against us, then they're for us. Yes. We got to get put away a finger yeah. and stop finger pointing right. within. And, and, and really make up in our minds that, that to those that have a heart to unite, that we unite and stay united. That's right. Yeah. What can we agree on? Can, can we agree that children need to eat? Right. <laughs> can, can, can we agree, you know, you know, that children in these community centers, you know, need, need to be raised up on some basic principles in life that their parents didn't even have? Yeah. Leave everything else out of it. Let's come together with this one agenda because the nation seemed to be able to do it. Trust and believe the leaders of the Democrats and the leaders of the Republicans, once they clock out, they go to the same restaurants, mm -hmm. they go to the same meetings, mm -hmm. they go to the same religious worships, and they shake hands and they hug, and they don't even talk about politics. Right. Right. See, a lot of people don't know that. They don't see that. Yeah. That's even psychology in, in how they separate the Democrats from the Republicans. Mm -hmm. So you always think that these people are against each other, but really, psychologically, it's just conditioning you to perpetuate that same yeah. division yeah. Right. within your home and within your family and within your community. But you don't see behind closed doors. They are on one accord. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Pastor. They are on one accord. It's like a fraternity. Yes. Right? Right. It's a fraternity. Even in sports, like you said, right now you got this collective bargaining agreement going on amongst football players where, you know, they all play for different teams mm -hmm. and they all want to win and, and, when they, and, and when they're fighting against each other, you see them going against each other and even might see them fighting and bickering and all of that. But at the end of the day, they are a union. Mm -hmm. And every single year they come together and they agree on changes and they agree on progress and nobody is 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 a I'm a Seattle Seahawk or I'm a Washington Redskin. We are NFL players. Right. So if the world is able to do that, again, like I said, why can't we? Yeah. Yeah. One reason that I think that we can't do it is because we don't understand the price for it. Um, let's go back to the King David type of scenario, mm -hmm. right? Okay, well we'll just use him for example. So twice in his life, there comes the price of foreskins, right? So um, foreskins represent circumcision. You represent God if you are circumcised. You are of his people, right? That's how we identify them. People confuse the story with him and Goliath as a means to overcome their enemy. But really, he was sentenced to collect thousands of foreskins, right? 
That was his price. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just defeating Goliath and his people. It was a conversion factor. When it comes to him giving off the price for the dowry to Jacob for his daughters, Leah and Rachel, right? Notice that the only way that he could get his 14-year sentence reduced was the price of foreskin. It's not just about you going out here preaching the word, but it's a conversion factor that has to be in there. Mm -hmm. You have to realize that it is a numbers game no matter what. The more God gives you, it, the bad she needs to cancel out. There must be a transactional number that balances it out. The more God blesses you, the more you should go bless somebody right. else. Mm -hmm. And people aren't willing to sacrifice in that way. That's right. And so when I teach my kids statistics and math, I use those scriptures to teach them regression analysis awesome. Awesome. and statistics. I use little stuff like, hey, fear not was mentioned X amount of times in the Bible. And no matter what your profession is, no matter what you do in life, it, everything has to be transactional. And people aren't realizing that there has to be a sacrifice and actually standing up to the yeah, challenge. And that's why we don't right. see the difference. Yes. Right. Because yes. they can't actually see those mm -hmm. situational things in a number form or in an energy cost and effect form. Right. There's an imbalance, you know what I mean? Because a lot of us are taught to take, 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 take. Yes. You know, and, and we celebrate God for, for being able to receive. But we're not. But, but, but we're, it has to balance out. Now, now, just as much as I receive, I got to go pour that out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, he says that we'll be like, uh, like, like a planted like rivers, yeah. like trees by, by rivers of water. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? What they see when they read this word, what they see is you're being taught to be poor, 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 right. poor, and then the media is teaching you be wealthy, 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 right. wealthy, and right. they're not understanding the factor that. When you receive, a giver is always blessed. There we go. That's what they don't understand. That's a principle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's a principle. Yeah. yeah. They yes. don't understand that. They don't see the cost and effect of that. Right. Yeah. Because it doesn't have a number of value to them. All they see is, oh, that whole, everybody at church poor, they ain't got nothing, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what they see. So they don't even want to bite a piece of it. Right. That's right. It's right. a resistance because they can't see the energy. They can't see the words. They can't see the fruit. And so why would you buy something that you don't see the fruit of? Mm. We say that all the time, right? Yeah. If you want to sell me a house, right. <laughs> you better have one. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, if you're, if, if you're trying to get anything across to me, and that's why even within our media family, we preach, man, you better be a doer of this word. Right. Right. We don't get up here and preach not to have an experience with what has come across. Right. You got to meditate on this thing so you can activate it. You understand what I'm saying? And that's that, that's a really good point. And, and what she said, why would they buy into something that they don't see the fruit of? Absolutely. You know, even in our community's ignorance, they understand fruit. <laughs> they understand cause and effect. Like they understand if I do this. I will get this. That's even how the Most High spoke to us in the scripture. If you do this, there are conditions on everything. So they understand that. That is a very, very good point. So how do we show them that fruit? How do we, you know, show them that? Of course, we have to bear it. But how do we allow them to see the fruit from knowing who they are and following the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High? And how that's going to benefit them. We know it's much in every way. Right. Because we've studied and, right. and so forth and so on. But but to to Danielle's point, there are a lot of people in poverty behind the table shooting precepts. That's right. And right. doing it. And and so they looking at you like Right, you ain't got nothing. Like so, how? I mean, this is not helping you. Right. So how is it going to help right. me? So that's a very, very good. Yeah, I took some kids to church, yeah. and they were like, "I have never seen this many sick people before, and I wanted the doctor or the hospital." Right. They was not buying. <laughs> right. 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 That's a good point. Excellent point. <laughs> yeah. And, and and what you see is what you get with them. Yeah. And, and, and that's that's one of the things that, that we talk about during barbershop talk is how important it is to be transparent. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to bear all your business. 
and incriminate yourself, but at the same time, you got to be transparent. You got to be talk about how to, how, how to overcome, how you overcame in a certain situation. You know what I mean? You got to, what does it say? That the scripture says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, which has already been shed, right? right so so Yeshia already did his part. Right. Now, part two of that is we overcome by what else? The word of our the testimony. Word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of people out here talking that don't have a testimony. Mm -hmm. So those that do understand the testimony understand the value in your testimony. Understand that you have to tell it and that you have to roll it out from beginning to end to somebody that's going through the same thing that you're going through so that they can see the blueprint. Mm -hmm. right. This is why we got to get out here and get from out these four walls and we got to get in community centers and, and we got to do what we got to do because we have a testimony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got people that get paid to, to speak, to do motivational speaking. They understand how powerful the testimony is. Mm -hmm. They get paid. Right. Off of their testimony. Mm -hmm. Right? What? So so how 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 it says he that win of souls is wise right. and reaps what? Wages. Reaps wages. There's gonna be fruit from your testimony. Mm -hmm. That's good. You understand what I'm saying? Stop putting your faith in, in what you think it should be in and put it in the most high for real. Mm -hmm. Right. And then get out here and testify. Right. Again, if I be lifted up. I'll draw all men unto me. Right. People are going to see. That there's a balance of power coming. Right. Trust and believe that. Right. And what we got to understand, we got to look at some of these people out here that are looting and, and that don't know what else to do but fight uh, violence with violence, is we just got to look at them like, like, like the disciples looked at the Zelots. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You're going to have Zelots amongst you. Right? Mm -hmm. right. You're going to have those. Right, but, but what should we be doing? Mm -hmm. We see the disciples, they were not only watching, but they were praying, they were witnessing, they were giving their testimony, they were telling people, hey, bring all that you have into the central location, and then we're going to divide it amongst the people as they have me, because even in that, it eradicates sin, yes, it does. because now lust is not in place, right. now covetousness and jealousy can't abound, because everybody has. So you got to even understand, he says that my cup, what, overflows. Yes. The overflow is for your people. Yeah. The overflow is for the children. Mm -hmm. And you can't, even, you can't even give it to them if, if you're just going from home to service, home to service, mm -hmm. from home to the store. You, you, you have to purpose yeah. to get out here. Right. And that's the platform that we love um, to provide during our outreach. Right? As believers and as Hebrews, stop false advertising. Oh, I mean, bring that up. we can make a flyer and put it on Facebook like we got 150 people or more participating in some event and so forth and so on. And then when they get to our assembly and they only see five or six people, you have just false advertising. I... I am so settled in where we are in this ministry. Mm -hmm. Half of the people that even view us don't even know about the outreach we do because the Most High, uh, Yeshua, made no reputation of himself. That's we right. don't do that. That's right. And we need to stop doing that as Hebrews and be real with people so people understand that when they come in, it's a process. And that their, 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 their expectations are not false, falsely generated. They don't have these false expectations uh, like they did with us in the Christian church. That's, that's exactly where that mentality comes from. Stop false advertising. Be transparent enough to say, listen, when you come into this faith and this belief, you might not have a lot of friends. It might not be a lot of people with you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because the, the scriptures say that narrow is the gate. Yes. And there are few that find it. And then it says the righteous are going to scarcely make it in. Mm -hmm. 
So when I see mega, mega this and mega that, I shy away from it immediately. <laughs> because I'm like, wait a minute. It doesn't mean that, that our ministries or, or our works are going to prosper and grow. That's not what I'm, what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we have a lot of people advertising falsely where they really are. And what it does is it calls a person that lusts after where they really are to not understand the process. So then when they come into the faith and the truth and all of a sudden they're losing things, they're thinking nobody told I didn't know it was like this. I didn't know people were, weren't going to believe me. I didn't know I was going to lose family. I didn't know when I stopped celebrating holidays that I was going to become the black sheep. I didn't know it was going to be like this. We got to be honest with people about how it's going to be. We have to be honest with these pastors that we're telling them to come out of paganism. Hey, you right. might lose 75% right. of your congregation right. Right. when you come out of paganism. Right. Right. We got to be honest. That, that that's that's I, I don't that's an epidemic amongst our people is false right. whether it's in Christianity he uh, the Hebrew faith whatever faith yeah. you in the world we floss to the max and present a false representation of what it really is and that's why we don't trust each other. That is the, 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 the biggest deal because you, you had somebody meet your representative and they never met you. And then when the real you showed up, it wasn't what they expected because you advertised yourself falsely. Mm -hmm. It's right. plain and simple. Plain and simple. And that, that creates distrust in our community. It does. Because we're constantly falsely advertising. That's a good point, Pastor Ron. And, and, and still, again, it just goes to show, you know, we ain't never had nothing. <laughs> That's what people do. You know what I mean? As, as, as soon as, you know, they get, you know, $100 in their pocket, you know, they looking for that pair of tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. right, right. You know what I mean? That's right. Instead of saying, you know what? I know how to make. I know how to bake cookies. Right now, 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 let me, you know, take twenty five of this hundred dollars, and 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 pay up up in uh, in Charlotte to, to become a sole proprietor. Right. It only costs twenty five dollars right. to become a sole proprietor. And now, let me get some supplies so I can bake these cookies, mm -hmm. and let me flip this hundred. Yeah. So I can have two hundred, or so I can have three hundred, or whatever. You know what I mean? But the first thing we want to do is flaws. And that's how it is even within the Hebrew faith is as soon as we get some precepts, now we want to jump on social media and show how smart we are. Right. And then we want to point the finger at certain Christian pastors for not changing their doctrine or not coming away from Sunday worship mm -hmm. when we ain't, we don't even know how difficult it is yeah. to pastor people. Right. We don't know how, how, how understand how people are creatures of habit. And that they're used to a certain way of life. And so you can't just go cold turkey on mm -hmm. Understanding that even in your own testimony, you didn't cold turkey nothing. Right. right. You understand? Right. And so how, now this is what I always say. Like, like personally, I have a disdain for pork. I have, a, I have a conviction about pork. Right? I know I'm Israel. I know it's an abomination to the Most High. That is an easy thing for me to, to overcome or even to stand against because it just hits home. You understand? It just hits home for me. But, but I say, Father, the same conviction that I have about this pork, let me have that same conviction about not being lustful. That's right. Let me have that same pork conviction right. about being compassionate with others. Right. About practicing temperance. That's yes. right. Let me have that same conviction about how I spend my money and where I spend my right. money. That's right. Right. Because it does no good for us to operate principles in one area, mm -hmm. but then we're lacking in another area. Yeah. When the Most High said, "I've given you all sufficiency in all things." Yes. Yes. Take that same conviction that you had mm -hmm. in the streets about being real, mm -hmm. and be a real Hebrew. Stop false advertising. Stop faking. Right. <laughs> you don't even understand that 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 if you if, if you false advertise, you don't give anybody an opportunity to add their expertise or add what their gift Thank to you. your congregation and to your ministry. Thank you. 
If you're transparent and you say, hey, this is what we can do, this is what we can't do, mm -hmm. you understand? Then that person, the, the, the most high, send that person in and they be like, oh, Pastor Kenny, I can do this. Yeah. Pastor Kenny, I can do that. Right. Oh, you don't have anybody to do this right now? Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Right. Yeah. Shout out, shalom, Pastor. <laughs> I didn't want to disturb you. <laughs> oh, you say hi? <laughs> what? You find it? No, sir. Could you just put a note on it? Yes, sir. whoever. Absolutely. Okay, just put a note on it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Love you. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to be transparent. You got to be an open book. Mm -hmm. Because we overcome by the blood, which we already have, yeah. and then we overcome by the word of our testimony. We write the vision, we make it plain, yeah. so that when people see it, they can take it and do what? Run right. with it. Yeah. Yes. back to what um, Gami was saying about um, false advertising. And I think the danger in false advertising over promising is you block your blessings from what you actually need, like Dad was saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I have. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, and so what you were saying, and, and, and the point everybody is trying to make, in Ecclesiastes or the Book of Sirach, um, chapter 2, it says here, to substantiate what you're saying, stop faking, be real, yeah. you know, explain to people that, that when you come into the truth, you may lose family, yeah. you may lose congregational members, you're going to lose. Yeah. Because what's really happening at the end of the day is you don't realize that you were playing for the other team. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Satan was your coach. That's right. You were playing for his team. So now when you make a decision that you no longer want to play for his team, he's going to take away the Gatorade. He's going to take away the locker room. Mm -hmm. He's going to take away the contract. He's going to take away all of the things that he promised right. or that you were walking in because now you're no longer part of his crew. Right. You're no longer on his team. Mm -hmm. Right? So it says here as we close out, Sirach 2, my son, if thou come to serve the Most High, Prepare thy soul for temptation. Mm. Set thy heart aright. Mm. That means you got to make up in your mind that you are okay yeah. with whatever comes along with serving the Most High. Mm. Don't be surprised when you begin to lose things. That's yeah. right. You have to set your heart aright. That's a commandment. Not playing the woe is me or, or, or fake it till you make it type, type doctrine. Putting up advertisements and doing things and that you know it really ain't even like that. Right, right. But then you hide behind fake it till you make it. Right. That's not transparency. Right. If thou come to serve the most high, prepare thy soul for temptation, set thy heart aright, and constantly endure. Mm -hmm. And make not haste in time of trouble. So even if it don't look like things are working, here comes that patience that we just mentioned earlier. Uh -huh. And that's what our people need to understand. That 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 there is an enemy yeah. and the Most High is doing something spiritually. Because the enemy knows he only has a short time, so he's doing things to you. But if you have not set your heart right and prepared your soul for temptation based on what your God says, now your faith and your energy is misguided. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you're keeping the laws, when you're keeping the statutes and the commandments, when you're doing and living by the principles of this word, it's going to bear fruit. All you have to do is be patient. Mm -hmm. See time and what? Hearts. Understanding that you can plant a seed, but you have to water it. Then you have to wait. Right. Right? right? So make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him. Cleave unto the most high. Cleave unto his people. Cleave unto your brothers and sisters that are moving in the same direction. That are willing by any means to serve the most high regardless yeah. of what it looks like or who you lose. Right. You'll find so much unity in that if we just be transparent, set our heart aright, and then be willing to be patient. Right. You understand the fruit that that will produce? You'll find out that there are more people that think like you than you even knew. Because the Most High is going to bring you together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cleave unto him 
depart not the way that thou mayest be what? Increased at thy last end. So before it's all said and done, you know that you have the victory. This is what causes you to endure. Right? When you go to work, you go to work knowing that in two weeks you are going to get a check. If you did not set your heart or your mind on the fact that you were going to get paid in two weeks, would you go to work? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> You're not going to hang on the wing in the prayer when it comes to your money. Right. So why hang on the wing in the prayer when it comes to your freedom and your liberty and your life, yeah. your eternity? Yeah. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Mm -hmm. And be what? Patient. 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 When thou art changed to a low estate. Hallelujah. Right? Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves break in and steal. Yeah. Right? Understand that, that to gain the world is to what? Lose your soul. Yeah. So when you're brought into a lower state, you're gaining the kingdom. You're gaining the attention of the Most High. You're gaining his admiration. You're gaining his promises. Because he said that my word shall not return to me what? Oh. Void. So be patient. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be patient. Yes. Hallelujah. Endurance is a gift. Be Hallelujah. patient. The kingdom is within you. I've put endurance on the inside of you. Now through your worship and your understanding of how the process works, mm -hmm. it will reap in due season. Yeah. You said it. You said it, sis, <laughs> but don't what? Don't faint. Don't, don't faint. If you faint not. If you faint not. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and should expect to receive nothing from the Lord, from the Most High. This is why you got to know you, Israel. This is why you got to know who your God is. Yes, hallelujah. Because he's a conditional God. Yes, he is. His love is unconditional, but conditional God. Yes. If you do this, yes. if you clean your room, you can go outside. That's if right. you do these chores, I'll take you to the store or I'll give you an allowance. Right. That's right. Get them in. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. If you go to school and you get good grades, mm -hmm. then I will. Mm -hmm. Because he told us what? Renew your mind that you may prove what? His good, and perfect, and, and acceptable will. That's so right. even when you are brought into a lower state, his will is perfect for your life. Uh, now this is where you meditate. Now this is where you get strengthened. Yeah. Now this is where you begin to build your testimony so that when you go out to those that are going through the same thing that you're going through, you got to see. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. For listen to this. This is how the Most High looks at you, Israel. For gold. Everybody say gold. gold. For gold is tried in the what? Fire. Fire. And acceptable when men in the, and it says acceptable men in the furnace of what? Adversity. We're in Jacob's trouble because we are the gold. The angle or the end is the kingdom that we will reign, that we will rule in. Daniel singing this himself. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. And we're going to close out with verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody's words have been so valuable today. Mm -hmm. Very good. Sometimes uh, Pastor Kenny just like to have a round table mm -hmm. because wisdom is within you guys. Yeah. The gifts of the Most High are within you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my job as a pastor is to activate those gifts. Yeah. So that means if I don't need to be up here doing all of the talking all the time. <laughs> Since you was breaking some serious stuff now. You understand? Hey. Yeah. I learned something. It's like I know it, but at the same time, when you hear other people talking, it makes you happy. It makes you proud. Everybody that's saying stuff up in here, it's making me happy. It's making me proud. I see the spirit moving. I see the yeah. most high working in your life. I see the fruit. Yes. Buddy. Your fruit is buddy. Yes. That it shall bear. So when people see it, they can eat of it. Yes. All of us are trees planted by rivers of water. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 I don't want everybody always coming to my tree. I want them to come to your tree. Yeah. Yeah. 
They may not want apples today, but they need oranges, and they need plums, and they need watermelon. They need, they need all of these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's my job to empower yes. your gifts and your talents yes. Yes. because the body needs it. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I say, Daniel, right? Let me get there, and then I'm going to read it, and then we're going to get it back. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what the masses are afraid of. Daniel said in, in, in chapter 7, verse 13, he said, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given to him what? Dominion yeah. and glory yeah. and a kingdom all that right. all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Mm -hmm. See, this is the problem. We've been scattered into all nations. Yeah. So this is why we got to preach the gospel. This is why we got to preach to we are who we are because we've been scattered abroad. Mm -hmm. right? right? But our king, Yeshua, he was brought before the Most High on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Right? But what the enemy is afraid of is that when he comes and as we build towards his coming, that we are going to be the ones that have dominion. It says an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. This is why the wicked are provoking us, doing the things that they are doing to us because they know they have a short time. They know that when the kingdom of heaven, when the kingdom of the Israelites come, it will be everlasting. Hallelujah. This is it for them. So they're desperate. They're trying to hold on by deceit, by leading you down paths of unrighteousness, by deceiving you, by giving you gifts that destroy your heart to fight and want to fight for this kingdom, which is an everlasting kingdom that belongs to you in the first place. This is what Daniel seen, an everlasting kingdom which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So when we come into the knowledge of who we are, and like Sister Yvette said, we begin to see the value in the laws, the statutes and commandments, and we begin to keep them. Now we are preparing a foundation for the kingdom to be built. That's right. This is why the masses and the powers that be are doing everything that they can to stop us because they see us on the internet. Mm -hmm. They see us waking up to who we are. Mm -hmm. They see us in our, in our church homes and in our assemblies worshiping on the Sabbath. They've seen mm -hmm. the drop in numbers mm -hmm. in the Christian churches. Mm -hmm. They've seen the drop in money and finances. Right. Right. And right. they're upset. Mm -hmm. Their plan isn't working, even through COVID. They didn't get the riots and the things that they wanted. So let us publicly put on display a black man being killed. Maybe we can get their attention then. Maybe we can get them into the streets so we can lock them up. So we can tear gas them. So that we can shoot them. So that we can, we, we, we can uh, basically diminish the light that's being shed on the situations that's going on. Because you notice every time something happens to one of our people, here comes a backstory about how we weren't the cleanest people or how or where they point out our mistakes. Mm -hmm. So this is why we got to gather. This is why we got to support. Right. This is why we got to stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters in the Right. Come on. And Pastor, the kingdom that we are establishing and that we are believing in is not a Jim Jones kingdom just because we have all things in common. That's right. And I think folks have to understand that this is, not, and maybe some folks don't, are too young to know who Jim Jones is, right. but we, we who are older, we know who Jim Jones is. That's right. We're not out to exploit our people. We're not no. out to steal from our people. We want to bring a, a kingdom where just because we have all things in common, that doesn't mean we're out to steal. That's a great point. Right. That's right. a great point. Right. But what you understand is, you know, what, what that does is, is it empowers you to be a leader. Mm -hmm. It empowers you to see the fruits of your labor. You it, When you give, like I said before, do you know how, how great you feel? Especially when you're giving towards something that you know is going to bear fruit. That's right. And you're not just aimlessly giving. Right. That's right. Right? That's right? But when you when you have that mindset, it just organically happens. Right. 
Hallelujah. Because all of y'all that have been here, y'all ain't seen me and Pastor Ronda raising no offerings. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. We let you know, hey, at the end of the day, if you want to give, give. Right. You understand? But the Most High continues to sustain the work. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? But 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 the power of giving, it's not just about money. It's about your time. Your time. It's about your time. love and your effort and your care. You know, giving attention. That's right. So what's going on out here and saying, you know what? I am going to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I want you to know here at Restoration Center Charlotte, that if you are about doing something, yeah. this is a place for you. This is a platform for you. Yeah. Whether you are a so-called member or not, yeah. we're going to let you know when we get ready to hit the streets. Right. And whenever you're ready, let's go. Right. Let's get it. Let's go. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this was very different today. Yeah. Um, but but I just felt led, honestly, to just have a family conversation. Yeah. So that when we leave here, we know that we are all on the same page. We leave here empowered to really want to do something and not just be the, just diagnose the issues. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, in, Pastor Brown. All praise to the most high. Before we close out real quick, um, I just want to uh, talk, um, say a little bit more about the girl chat if, if you haven't been on. Uh, we've been talking about um, writing our business plans and creating multiple streams of income. And as Pastor Kenny said, um, I am creating that marketplace page on our website. So if you have a business, if you want to start a business, if you need a network of people to help support that business, I would encourage you to join us on the Girl Chat. I would also encourage you to give me your information so that I can promote your business on the Marketplace page um, on our website. I have not, I'm building the page now. Um, and once I build the page, it won't just sit there on the website. I will be promoting these businesses, um, especially our women, because a lot of times, um, you know, in, in certain groups, I would say, um, the women's gifts are suppressed. Um, and it, it's very important that people understand who the Proverbs 31 woman really was. Um, she was a businesswoman. Um, she was a woman that created something from nothing. And she was so powerful and was so able to sustain her family and her husband that her name would be recognized in the gates, you know, of the city. So that, that was a blueprint. When you go back through Proverbs 31 and you really read about what kind of woman that Solomon was talking about in that proverb, that the Most High gave us that as a blueprint for what we should be doing. Um, yes, we are nurturers of the home. We um, support our spouses and so forth and so on. We raise our children, and, but we have so much more on the inside of us that we can give to this world. And that's what the Most High has mandated me to do, to bring women together, daughters of Zion together that know who they are from all assemblies. If you're of the nation of Israel, from all assemblies, it doesn't matter what assembly you go to, we come together and we discuss, you know, how to further our businesses. We discuss how to, um, you know, um, elevate ourselves as far as um, iron sharpening iron and being there and supporting one another. But we cannot have all things in common until we know each other. The scripture says to know those who labor amongst you. That is the only way that people are going to go past that distrust barrier is when they know you. And how do, you, how do we know each other when we assemble together? Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. All of this ties in together for how the Most High wants the nation of Israel to move in the earth. And then he's going to bring us all together in the end anyway. So all this finger pointing and isms and schisms and separations and so forth and so on, you align yourself with people that do righteousness, that follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High in righteousness. If they're not doing that, don't align yourself with them. You know, but when you're looking for the way people talk, whose name they call on, and the whole nine, that's when you're going to get off and you're going to end up missing, missing your blessing. 
So I did want to say that um, not only just for those on social media, if you are interested in um, us uh, supporting your business, if you're interested in getting the Zoom link to Girl Chat, you can email me at restorationcentercharlotte at gmail.com. Give me your information. I'll make sure you get the link. You can email me your business information to make sure that, you know, it's posted. Now, you gotta do, you got to do good business. So <laughs> when you email me your business information, I'm actually going to set up a time to talk with you. I'm not going to pr promote no shoddy businesses. Um, and if you need help, in areas of your business, that's what we're here for as well. And it's not just me. I have a network of people um, that I'm associated with that can help. I, I'm not the end-all, be-all. That's, that's the reason why we have fellowship. We have koinonia because we, we, we're in touch with all kinds of people in all kinds of fields that can help. But we really, really, really want, if we really want to move in our community to make change, we have got to start putting this stuff in practice and we have to start trusting each other so we know that we can't trust each other without fellowship that's right. so you know you need to be in the building hallelujah hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. that's all i wanted to say and please understand that that uh like a wise man said from our past nobody can take advantage of a man or woman at the most high <laughs> that's right nobody can take advantage of you as long as you are moving the way that the most high wants you to move right and he's going to separate the wheat from the tent. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. And, and, and we are the wheat. Yes, we are. We are the children of Israel. The kingdom is within us. Yes. Hallelujah. The Most High likens us unto a delicate woman. We are that woman. We are that bride of the Most High in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to get the job done. Like I said in my past one time, I said this train may move slow. Nevertheless, it's moving. That's right. And when it picks up, better be on board because we mobbing for the most high mm -hmm. and, and so i love each and every one of you for those of you that view uh by way of social media uh facebook live i just want to say on behalf of restoration center charlotte we love you we appreciate you uh we thank you for your support all of you who are walking in righteousness and striving uh to, to bring forth the kingdom and do all of the things the wonderful and amazing things that the most high has called you to do we salute you on the shabbat we say thank you and remember in everything you do Make the most high, the most high in your life. Shalom and blessings.